So if we run a bunch of experiments, and we run a bunch of experiments and we get these equilibrium states for each experiment, let's look carefully and see if we can see a relationship. Now, in each case, experiment one, these are the equilibrium concentrations. Do you see any thing here that we can make some kind of mathematical law to describe the relationship of these concentrations when they come to equilibrium? Is the equilibrium, at the equilibrium, uh, will the concentrations of A and B always be greater? Uh, let's see, here they're, here A and B are greater, but here A and B are not greater. Here A is pretty big, but B is pretty small. C is even smaller, but D is larger than 1. Really hard to look at this and see any kind of relationship between the concentrations of the reactants and products when the system came to equilibrium. To write an equilibrium expression, now this is, this is the thing you're going to get very good at, to write an equilibrium expression. And by the way, question number one on the AP test, the extended response, will be this kind of question. You will probably write an equilibrium expression. The equilibrium expression is the concentration of the products raised to the power of their coefficients divided by the concentration of the products. Uh, that should be that should be reactants right here. Raised to the power of their coefficients. So the law of mass action, that's what this is called. Let's go here to the next page and write that. And let's see here. Here we have the equilibrium constant, commonly written KEQ, other values, other abbreviations that we will encounter. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the equilibrium constant is the concentration of the reactants, of the products, sorry, the products, concentration of C, the concentration of D, raised to the power of their coefficients. The coefficient for D is 3, so here you see it raised to the third power, divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So here we have a coefficient of 2 for A, and so you see here in the law of mass action, you see A raised to the second power. And B has a 1 in front of it, so you see here it's raised to the first power. That is the equilibrium expression. So if somebody says write the equilibrium expression, that's all you have to do. Really a pretty simple thing. Now I, I do want to just quickly point out at this time that we will have other values for K. Sometimes you'll see K written with a C. This is what your textbook does, and it uh, simply means that the equilibrium constant is expressed in concentration of molarity. Typically we don't even worry about the units of the equilibrium constant because they can be kind of bizarre units. You'll notice here we have all of these various coefficients and so we don't get a lot of help from the units in this particular case. Um, Kp is the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. Ka is the equilibrium constant for a weak acid system. Kb is the equilibrium constant for a weak base system. Kw is a very special equilibrium constant, and it's 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And this is uh, what we base our pH scale on. Uh, that's why the pH scale is usually people talk about it going from 0 to 14, and that's because of something called the Kw, the equilibrium expression for water dissociation, actually. And um, Ksp, which is the equilibrium expression for the solubility product constant. Wow! 
all of these concepts of equilibrium, all six of these, use this same law of um, mass action or the equilibrium expression. <clears throat> so the equilibrium expression for this reaction that's shown above, we could um, solve for this value, this thing called Kc, the equilibrium constant. And we could solve for that by plugging in here the values for C and the value for D. Of course, we're going to cube that. The value for A, which is going to be squared, and the value for B. And we do the just the math. And we calculate this number called the equilibrium constant, and typically no units here on the equilibrium constant. So what did we get for the equilibrium constant in the experiment 1? 0.442. Well, let's go to look at experiment 2. These are the experiments we looked at a little while ago. Um, here we have the second experiment, and when the equilibrium... Uh, when the system comes to equilibrium, we're going to put C here, the concentration of the chemical C, the concentration of chemical D, and we're going to have to cube that, the concentration of A squared, and divided by the concentration of B. So you just have to be a little bit careful with your order of operation as you're doing this. Make sure you um, do the take care of the exponent first and then do the multiplication and division. And here we've calculated for this, this is the same system, just a different set of concentrations at equilibrium. But what do we see about the equilibrium constant? Look at that. The equilibrium constant is the same value. Let's look at experiment three. Experiment three, if we plug in all of the values <clears throat> Um, let's see, it looks like I'm missing something here. Um, point seven eight zero there, because we've got to have all of these values. We've got to have C, we've got to have the concentration of D cubed, concentration of A squared, and the concentration of C. And I believe if you calculate this, you get 0.45, really close to the other values we've calculated for K within some kind of experimental um, error boundaries. So, you know, what you've noticed here is this. The answer to this question. Who can you depend on in life? Can you depend on your friends? Well, maybe usually. Can you depend on your teacher? Teachers, you know, trustworthy. Have I ever made a mistake? Well, not going to go there. Um, who can you depend on in life? Well, here is the answer. Even though disaster may strike your life, even though everything may go terribly, horribly wrong, keep in mind that K is truly a constant as long as you have a chemical system you're working with and as long as the temperature remains constant as long as the temperature remains constant k will remain constant one thing that is sure you can be sure of in life is that the equilibrium constant and other k constants will remain the same as long as the temperature remains constant